who were never there. Yeah. It breaks my heart. Oh, yeah. The first five years I went to camp out, I lived in Riverside. All right. And then I moved up here in 2015. And so the last five camp outs, I got to sleep in my own bed at night. Yeah, everyone thought, oh, God, it's so easy for you. You know, it was like an hour drive. And back then, when I lived in Riverside, we would come to the high desert to cool off. Because you're in Redlands, you know, it's cooler up here in the summer. It is. You know, and then I moved here. I'm like, oh, camp out. All right, that's going to take me five minutes to get there. Um, I used to do a lot of camping and rock climbing. And so came out to the park. Well, came out to the monument uh, for years. I know, but that's what's crazy is I've also met so many, well, one, I've met so many people I would not have otherwise met in life because of camp out and related bands and music and events. But then, oh my God, the number of people I met who grew up in or around Riverside or in the Inland Empire. The first one I went to was number six. Okay. And I actually went to number six with, we shall just call him life lesson number two. <laughs> and we had never gone to any of them. We haven't gone. Okay. So back in the early days, camp out was always the weekend after Labor Day. Mm -hmm. Number two and I had gotten married Labor Day weekend. So we always took vacation and traveled. And sometimes we were home in time for camp out. And sometimes we were not, but even when we were, it's like, dude, we were just gone for 10 days. Like we can't turn around and leave again. Like we just don't have it in us. And number six, one, after announcing number five was gonna be the last, how many years was it the last? Um, not only did they decide to do another, they kicked it out a weekend. There you go. And then suddenly, oh, well, now we can do this. Mm -hmm. And then, well, after that, I just started going by myself. <laughs> and they started kind of moving around a little bit over the years, especially towards the end. And I'm like, don't care, going. It's like, it's my thing. It's what I do. Yeah. My, my first camp out was actually camp out two. Okay. And it, I joined a Facebook group called Cracker Crumbs and we started chatting. And so when I got to camp out, 
that, that the first one I attended, I, th I actually, you know, knew a lot of these people before I'd actually met them in person. Oh. And it was just like a, a family vibe, a, you know, a, a good vibes, love fest. We got to meet each other. We got to break bread together. And I have some, I've made some lifelong, very close friends, lots of them, by going to camp out. And it, it's just like a family reunion kind of a, a vibe. It, 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 it's really special. And, you know, I would, some of the years I would even drive down alone. Uh, and I, it didn't matter to me because I knew when I got there, all my friends were going to be there. And so it was just like a, you get there and it was like a loving embrace so from that atmosphere. It really, I think was for me, the, the, the number one thing about camp out. Well, and also, you know, all the bands that are playing and, but it was like where we all got together. We'd be talking on the internet for a whole year and then we'd all get together at camp out. But yeah, just the, the overwhelming, you know, love and acceptance and and the camaraderie we had because I'm I met people that were like me, you know. We had the same uh st we loved the same style of music. We we appreciated every band that played. We you know, it was it was like I I finally met a large group of people that are are like me. Mm. And that's something really special. When you uh, had joined that initially, that Crumbs group, that Facebook group, um, how long before you joined that group to the time you came to Camp Out? Because it seemed like you, it was sort of gathering steam. Yes. Uh, um, how it happened for me, it started out as just like a yahoo chat room if i'm not can uh if i remember clearly and it, the administrator was a guy named john mockmore oh. and they used it was a lot of like bootleg trading and you know talking about cracker and, and camper van beethoven and you know it was kind of a small group but then it, it went to myspace and we it kind of went up a little bit of a notch there more people joined we're still in, you know, a few hundred. We got to like a few, a few hundred. So then, when Facebook came into play and, and the group was migrated to Facebook, uh, John Mockmore actually texted me and and he told me that, you know, his his life was busy. He, him and his wife were expecting an, uh, their first child, and he didn't really have the time to admin the group. And he told he chose me to take his place um and i at first i was like that's i don't want that responsibility john i i and i was reluctant and he's like no you're the guy I, you know and, I'm, and i was like i you know i'm i was kind of scared of it you know and he just went ahead and made me an ad, an administrator in the group just and he's just like nope you're it and so <laughs> i started admitting the group that was probably about 2011 Wow. And we've grown now up to over 3,500 people in the group. When I, when I started admitting, it was still in the hundreds. So it, it was just great people finding like-minded people on, on the web and, and they pack the, you know, as much as they can, the shows there's, there's nationwide camaraderie, you know, people are, you know, they're, in wherever Des Moines, Iowa, or Southern California, wherever there's a show, people will, you know, via the Cracker Crumbs have meetups and they'll get to dinner, dinner together and stuff before the show. I mean, it's just they'll let you crash on their couch if you know if you're traveling, and uh, it's just a great group of people, and it's grown exponentially since 2011. Down from 
Because I didn't know a lot of people in the first camp out, understandably, because right. I'm coming in as nobody knows me. I don't know them. and yeah. But, uh, you know, like I said, camping and, and, and knowing Ari and Missy and, you know, my my buddy uh, being there. And, and it was cool. And we just went to Joshua Tree and some hiking and stuff because I'm very much a hiking and outdoor enthusiast. And, and, and that was – I was like – and, you know, my, my friend looked at me. He's like, uh, man, this is great. But it's just, you know, and 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 it it, I hate to say evolve because I'm a molecular biologist, so I'd I'd like to use the evolution and evolve in the proper context. I, I would say progressed to the point where it became. We all love the music, but it became half about the music and half about the community. Yeah, kind of like how Grateful Dead fans would describe being on tour with them, and and I, I think that. The, the musicians involve yourself as well all that yeah. you know and I remember I remember it's probably camp out three I think it was where, where, where I was talking to Johnny just just you know just talking to his guys but uh, he said you know what I forget how close you guys are as crumbs as friends like we spend a lot of time like visiting each other and vacation even if it's it, not musically related Mm -hmm. You know, like I'll go up to Connecticut and hang out with K-Day and, and, you know, anyone's within, you know, uh, 
any kind of reasonable distance or, or even even far distance from me. You know, yeah. I'll go hang out with them and, and we'll look at each other through like, you know, things of celebration and also, you know, times of, of, of trouble. Yep. We, we look after each other and we, we, we yep. police ourselves. And uh, I challenge any musical following to be as peaceful and self-regulating and cohesive as us as scrums. Yeah. And, and, and my, and my dancing gets a little bit, uh, across hear this but a little bit exuberant mm -hmm. but uh i know when people around me i'm not like out of control and everything but <laughs> but i'm listening to like you know camper or cracker or the bell rays or or you know whatever fantastic bands plan yeah. uh, like digging in and you just you know i get i get animated and then you see like you know the dust coming up from from our dancing and, and us laughing and having a good time and then you know this this you know world-class musicians out there just just throwing it down and you're like oh that's a shooting star over there like this isn't exactly um torture this is <laughs> like heaven on earth also here's a memory i don't know if you you recall but this is when you guys were were dressed properly with the the white shirt and the thin <laughs> black tie and doing like the dangers yeah and and, and i was and Johnny like low down, I guess. And I said, Hey man, Chris, you know, Death of Me, that song The Trees is really great. Yeah. And you're like, Oh, thank you so much. And then like you know, you start playing, he's like, We'll do this for Lee. And and I was like, What? And Splinter just just mess with me as a as a friend, as a brother. He's like, Not you. <laughs> songwriter in one song hotwired to my heart called American Girl. He challenged me to seek power and passion and concise music never overdone. Songs as simple as rain and deep as the ocean. For 40 years Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers proved again and forever that great songs demand a great band. Finally, creative to the end, Petty insists that if you have the gift of song, it should be shared a lifetime. Postscript. In 1979, there was a three by five card posted on a wall in Lear's Music in San Bernardino, California that started the dangers, started Johnny Hickman, started Chris Leroy. It read, wanted lead guitars for a new rock band. Influences, The Clash, Costello, but mostly Tom Petty. Thank you, Tom Petty, for all you gave from the bottom of my heart.
Oh.